Hello, um, here I am with my regular look at the previews catalog from Diamond Distribution. This is the September 2023 issue. Um, all right, without further ado, um, for DC, I saw nothing of interest to me personally. Um, in Marvel, <clears throat> as always, I skip back to the collected edition, see what's there. Um, Captain America Omnibus Volume 4. Um, most of the Omnibus, I'm not very interested in the later editions, but this one is all Kirby. Um, I'm not sure if it's Kirby's entire run, but if it is, um, that's definitely worth picking up. Uh, worth taking a look at. Um, it's a nice, nice chunk of issues. Uh, Kirby's the only one credited here as the main person on the cover. It's just Kirby's name. So, um, yeah, I mean, just to my eye, it looks like it's his entire run, which is pretty fucking cool, actually. Um, as you can see here, here's a volume three of Daredevil, and you're already getting into 70s quote-unquote talent like Jerry Conway, Steve Englehart, um, so pretty weak stuff. Some interesting artists, though. Gene Colan, Barry Windsor Smith, the Bushima Brothers. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, another thing of interest in here, I don't, I won't pick it up, but the Daredevil by Brubaker and Lark Onibus. I liked that run of Daredevil. Um, and, uh, would recommend it. It's not the format I would want it in, personally, but, uh, um, still solid superhero comics, if that's your bag. Um, now we get into the previews here. So, um, something I thought I would point out, I have not actually read this series, but I've heard good things. Uh, Wild's End, uh, published by Boom. Not sure if it originally appeared here in America or if it's an English comic. Um, but uh, written by Dan Abnett, illustrated by I.N.J. Colbert. Looks like it's a uh, anthropomorphic comic. Anyway, I've heard good things. Um, this is the first three volumes collected into one volume, and there's a fourth volume, I believe, that's being serialized here. So. Anyway, um, wish I had more concrete info for you, but I have heard good things about that series. Thought it was worth mentioning. Jump very far ahead here. Here's something I am genuinely excited about. Um, from Ablaze Shakespeare Manga Theater um, by uh, Tezuka, Osamu Tezuka. Um, one of the great, great, great cartoonists. Um, it's very exciting to see more Tezuka coming uh, to uh, to English. It has been a while since we've had that regularly. Um, and I hope that Ablaze is able to stick with it. Um, yeah, 304 pages. Um, $14.99. That's a pretty good price. Um, so I'm hoping that it is a regular thing and does well for them. Tezuka has so much material that um, it would honestly probably take several companies putting out work to be able to keep up with. <coughs> Pardon me again. Sorry, I'm getting over being sick. Um, it'd take several companies to be able to keep up with um, his output. Uh, no one company could do it, but um, I hope it happens. Great, great stuff. Even um, fairly unimpressive Tezuka is still entertaining. Um, and when he's good, he's great. Um, jumping ahead a bit into the Dark Horse section, the creepy archives continue. Uh, the credited writer here is Bill Parente, or Parenti, who I am not familiar with. I'm used to seeing Archie Goodwin's name here. I don't know if he had moved on to uh, Marvel by then. Artist Tom Sutton in various... Um, Archie Goodwin is listed here in the the text, along with Steve Ditko, Reed Crandall, Angelo Torres, Alex Toth, and more. So, um, anyway, 
And then on the other end of the spectrum, Empowered, Volume 12 by Adam Warren. I am an, uh, a fan of Adam Warren's work. Um, sort of counterintuitively for someone like me. It's not generally the sort of thing I'd be into, but uh, the stuff I've read of his I've really enjoyed. Um, I think he's a, a natural cartoonist. Um, next up, our good friends at Cinebook. Bringing the Euro stuff over here that nobody knows they want. And, uh, maybe they still don't want it. Who knows? Um, a Christmas Carol adaptation. Uh, the art is by Jose Luis Munuera. Um, who I'm unfamiliar with. I'm sure it's lovely work though, like almost everything else in the book publishes. Uh, Thorgal, Volume 24, The Battle of Asgard. I have no idea if Thorgal has an ending or not. Um, if there's anyone watching who is more familiar with Euro comics, I'd be interested to know if there is an end to Thorgal. Um, but yeah, 24 volumes. Also down here, uh, 13 Volume 25, Cuba, where it all began. Um, so, I think uh, we're in the era of 13 stories written by the non-original creators, written and drawn by the orig unoriginal creators. Not unoriginal, but non-original. Um, so, anyway, your mileage may vary depending on your interest in that title and the um, original people. Um, from Drawn and Quarterly. <clears throat> Where are we at here? A uh, Little Lulu. Volume blank. They neglected to put the number in. Um, the Fuzzy Thingus Poopy. So, um, that's an interesting title. Um, uh, doesn't tell you what volume it is. I can't remember if they're on three or four with this stuff. Um, but anyway, that's a very nice presentation of some well-regarded comics, if you're interested. Um, that was all from Drawn and Quarterly that stuck out to me. Um, from a company that I'm unaware of, um, Editions Tenebus. Um, and this is Dirty Panties. By Maybelline Schwarzoff. Um, I don't know anything about this, um, but apparently it's about a sex worker. I'm curious to see what it looks like though, and um, to see if I hear anything about it anywhere else. So, like I said, not not familiar with that company. Um, I am familiar with Epicenter Comics. Um, in fact, in the next edition of uh, my Zine Canon, there is a a little spotlight on Epicenter Comics. Um, here's a new textbook, Captain Jack Signature Edition, um, with art by Enrique Brescia. So that's anytime you get any Brescia, dad or son, that's a cause for celebration. Also, uh, a new book of Zagor, The Return of Cain, uh, written by Mauro Baselli, art by Stefano Andrucci. Um, not familiar with that artist at all. I've never read any Zagor, but Epicenter has published quite a few Zagor books. And, um, I believe he's a popular Italian character. But, uh, Epicenter always puts out nice volumes. Fanographics. Um, the Atlas Artist Edition Volume 1. Joe Manili. So these are not artist editions in the IDW sense. These are just spotlights on various um, artists from Atlas Comics in the 50s. <coughs> Pardon me. Joe Manili um, might be familiar to some people of a certain age. Uh, Stan Lee used to talk about him in his soapbox column. Um, he, you know, complimenting Manili, but also in a sort of sideways manner saying, if Joe Manili had lived, you know, maybe we wouldn't have needed Kirby, you know. That's a real paraphrase, but um, I think that was the gist of what he was getting at. One thing's for sure, though, Manili could draw his ass off. 
<clears throat> and apparently he was very fast too. So um, anyway, nice big hard covers, 9.75 by 13.5. So that's a hefty size. 75 bucks is a pretty big price tag. Um, but if you're interested in this material, there you go. An even heftier price tag for Bill Ward, the Fanographic Studio Edition. Um, edited by Alex Chun, who edited those little, um, I don't know what you would call them, but they they did little collections of Dan DiCarlo and Bill Wenzel and Don Flowers, these sort of good girl artists, um, many years ago. Um, and now here is a studio edition, which is the Fanographics Artist Edition. Um, confusingly enough. Um, uh, 13.5 by 17, 180 pages, 175 bucks. Um, I am not super familiar with Bill Ward, um, though I can say his original art is gorgeous from what I've been able to see on a screen. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to this book and seeing what it looks like. Um... <clears throat> From Fanographics Underground, um, EC Fan Addict number five, edited by Grant Geisman. I'm not an EC Fan Addict myself, but this uh, long running um, EC fanzine is um, probably up the alley of some people. And then Flamed Out, the Underground Adventures and Comics Genius of Willie Murphy. Um, so apparently this book has been years in the making. Um, here's the measurements again. 9.5 by 12.5. That's a nice size book um, from one of the lesser known underground artists. Um, Fanographics continues to be um, one of the only companies who really cares about that era of comics and tries to put that stuff back into print in nice editions. Um, Really unheralded work, in my opinion. Um, Floating World out of Portland. New York City Outlaws. This is pretty exciting. Uh, written by Bob Hussar, and the art is by Ken Landgraf, um, who has been made uh, sort of famous in a comics way via the Kayfabe channel. Um, and therefore, they've driven the prices up on these comics so much you can't really get a hold of them now without spending a small fortune so very exciting to get a nice big collection 8 by 11 that's a great size 300 pages so um very this is by far to me the most exciting of the <clears throat> 80s black and whites that have come back into a, a print edition um i'm very much looking forward to seeing that uh, from Hermes Press, and sometimes interesting publisher, The Art and History of Popeye, <clears throat> written by R.C. Harvey. Um, I don't know when this book is from. It, it must be an older book. R.C. Harvey passed away quite a few years ago. Um, a a longtime comics historian and enthusiast, wrote for the journal for many, many years, had a, a private uh, newsletter blog for many years. Um, anyway, um, interesting guy and um, not a book I plan to pick up. It's 10 by 10, 10 by 10 hardcover. That's an odd size. Um, but I'm sure it will look great and have a lot of very cool stuff in it. Um, I think Popeye is great, but um, I don't pick up everything. Um, from Magnetic Press. A new Topi book, The Collected Topi, Future Perfect. Um, I honestly, it looks like this is just a collection of tales. I have no clue how long or how many volumes this Topi collection is supposed to go. We're now up to volume 10, and that's with a couple of side um, editions too, so interesting. Also, um, I mentioned these last month, but I'll mention them again. Bram Stoker's Dracula and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, both adapted and illustrated by Georgia Spress. 
um, George's Bess. Um, anyway, very interested to see what these look like. Um, I'm not going to order them, but uh, I hope that I get to see them in a store somewhere. Um, NYRC, one of the more interesting comics publishers going. Um, Ninja Sarutobi Suzuki. Um, a manga from the early 60s that I know absolutely nothing about. Um, the new essay by Ryan Holberg. Um, a well-known translator. Yeah, I know nothing about it, but the NYRC name is enough to, to pique my interest. So I'll definitely be checking it out. Um, from Oni. Faceless and the Family, number one of four. Um, Writer-artist is Matt Lesniewski. Um, a super talented artist who's, I don't think his writing is quite caught up with his drawing, but um, his drawing is pretty fucking spectacular. So um, I definitely, he's, he's on the short list of people that I can see buying something purely for um, how it looks. Um, I know, and I know that's, that drives the purchase for a lot of people, but. Uh, Silver Sprocket, uh, Pee Pee Poo Poo, number 80085, one shot, um, continuing Caroline Cash's, uh, well, they're all little one shots with kind of funny names. Um, anyway, another sort of oversized one woman anthology, um, Cash sure can draw, um, and is a, uh, a star on the rise. From Tomorrow's... Back issue number 149. This is a magazine that I pick up here and there when there's something of interest. And this issue is definitely something of interest for me. Re-experience 80s indie heroes. Starring the American Aztec Ace Dynamo Joe... Evangeline, Journey, Megaton Man, Trekker, Whisper, and Zot. Featuring Chuck Dixon, Phil Foglio, Stephen Grant, Rich Larson, Scott McCloud, William Messner Loebs, Doug Minch, Ron Randall, Don Simpson, Mark Verheiden, Chris Warner, and more superstar creators. Anyway, that's um, sort of designed to make me buy it, so I'll definitely be getting that. Also, comic book creator number 33. Looks like it's uh, a spotlight on Steve Gerber. Um, so, there you go. I think that's a good magazine, though, even though um, I'm not particularly interested in Steve Gerber. Um, from Uncivilized, Ginseng Roots, or Ginseng Roots Complete Box Set. So, this is all 12 issues in a box set. I'm sure it's a very lovely package. I do wonder if it also contains a bonus mini comic and a sticker. Um, that doesn't seem like a great price to me for 70 bucks. But um, what I'm really curious about is if this is going to get printed as a book. Because I figure there's no way the book will cost this much money. Um, and that's what I've been waiting for was for the, the uh, bound collection. So... Anyway, I don't think I'm going to go for this. I'll, I will hold out. Um, something that I have been buying in single issues, Maple Terrace number 3 by Noah Van Skyver. Um, yeah, I love Noah Van Skyver. He's one of my favorite cartoonists. So um, I recommend picking up anything he does, anytime you see it. Um, he's just an enjoyable and entertaining cartoonist. In the manga section... Um, a new 30th anniversary edition of Tech on King Crete, also known as Black and White. It's been reprinted here in America several times. Um, story and art by Taiyo Matsumoto. Anyway, very well regarded manga. Um, I'm not as high on it as some other people are, but it's still um, worth reading, especially if you have a lot of interest in manga. 
and it's since so much of the stuff goes in and out of print it's great when you get new editions of things especially things you may have heard about the last thing for me now volume 14 by Rumiko Takahashi um, still not sure how many volumes this is going but I'm hanging in there with it so um, and that was the only other manga of interest to myself okay um, I know I kind of rushed through that one like I said I'm getting over being sick I just moved so um, things are a little wonky here at uh, Casa de Canon so um, I hope to get back on making some regular videos after about a month's absence. And uh, if you have any thoughts, complaints, concerns about this month's previews or any coming attractions, uh, please let me know. Bye-bye.